and gentlemen, good day and welcome to Gabriel India Limited Q4 F523 earnings conference call. This conference call may contain forward-looking statements about the company which are based on the beliefs, opinions and expectations of the company as on date of this call. These statements are not the guarantees of future performance and involve risks and uncertainties that are difficult to predict. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode, and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Manoj Kolhatkar, Managing Director of Gabriel India Limited. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you. Uh, good morning and a very warm welcome to everybody present on the call and thanks for joining. Uh, hope you're all doing well. Uh, joining me today uh, is Rishi Loharuka, our CFO, and Nilesh Jain, our company secretary, and our uh, university relation agency, which is SGA. We have, uh, as you all must have seen, we have already uploaded our results uh, for the full year and the quarter four and full year uh, and the investor presentation yesterday on the stock exchange. Hope all of you had a chance to go through the same. Uh, and of course, we, we did have a special call after our JV announcement uh, in, in early May on, on May 10th, if, I'm, uh, if I recollect. So this is actually the second call for the full year results. So I'll give a brief overview of the company's uh, performance and take you along slide by slide on the presentation uh, and then you know open it up for any questions and clarifications. So if you refer to the presentation, uh, I think the first few slides, I think straight you can go to <coughs> slide number five. Uh, which captures the quarter performance. Uh, we we did a sale of 737 crores. It's been a healthy quarter. I mean, of course, not as good as uh, Q2. As you all know, the Q2 is the festive season quarter. That is always the best. Uh, second is this quarter, which which is in, in line with that. So 737 crore of uh, sale with an EBITDA of 7.1% and TBT of 6.1%. Uh, you know, if you come to slide six, uh, you can see that you know uh, again the same uh, same figures here but uh, just to share that the cash position is now improved to 300 crores and the cash flow from operations you know uh, has improved to 115 crores as compared to 31 crores in the corresponding quarter last year uh, we incurred a capex of 37 crores in the quarter uh, so this is for the quarter and if you come to the slide next slide which is uh, for the full year uh, you know, we had, of course, the best year, uh, like many of us in the auto industry. Uh, it was a fabulous year for the auto industry as a whole. Uh, we did 2,972 crores, so we just missed 3,000 by a small margin, uh, which is a growth of 27% compared to last year. And EBITDA, we posted a growth of 46% compared to last year. And TBT, 40.7% growth compared to last year. Uh, again, uh, the cash flow has been good uh, to the team of 136 crores compared to 95 crores uh, in the previous year. CapEx incurred for the period is 106 crores. Uh, so going forward, we are, of course, expecting that we'll deliver a strong quota again, I mean, in terms of you know, uh, the industry. So far as holding on to numbers, there was a bit of concern due to the implementation of OBD2. Uh, however, April and May, uh, have been okay. Of course, yes, this year as as an industry, uh, just to give a perspective, uh, we are expecting it not to be as strong as last year. It will still be a growth year, but more more in a single, in a high single digit is what is the overall expectation of the industry. Uh, so we are also happy to announce that the board has recommended, based on the last year's performance, uh, you know, we board has recommended final dividend of 1.65 on the face value of rupee 1. Uh, and this is subject to the approval of shareholders. So the dividend payout ratio is maintained, in fact, uh, maybe a little much higher at 28%. Uh, coming to the industry, uh, while I'm speaking on that, uh, you know, there was uh, overall industry growth of 22%. Uh, you know, each segment has done well, uh, despite uh, the inflationary pressures uh, and, uh, you know, continued semiconductor issues. We still saw a good growth because there was a good pent up demand and that, that still holds on. As you all know, if you go to buy a car today, you, I think no car comes without a waiting period. And some cars, 
particularly SUVs, you know, come with a waiting period of as high as even 18 months. So uh, even two wheelers did post a growth of about eight eight to nine percent. Uh, passenger cars did very well in terms of uh, growth compared to last year of 27 percent. Commercial vehicles by 34 percent. Tractors also had a record year. Of course, uh, we we don't uh, supply to tractors, but as um, they form part of the automobile industry, they also did very well. Almost hit a million figure uh, in in 22-23. And three wheelers, you know, because of the schools opening up and the commuting coming full fledged uh, after the COVID years, it grew a fantastic 87 percent year on year. And as you all know, you know, Gabriel has a good market share in three wheelers. Overall, the industry sale for passenger cars uh, was, uh, you know, almost 3.9 million vehicles, uh, which is the highest ever for the industry. Uh, the previous record was in 1819, which was about 30, 33, uh, about 3.3 million. So it's a significant growth over the highest period, which we saw pre-COVID. So that's uh, really a good sign, and we we surpassed Japan uh, to be, you know, to become the third highest uh, automotive passenger car market. Uh, in terms of sales. Um, again, the various factors did contribute. One was, you know, the pent-up demand uh, following the pandemic. A uh, lot of new models and really, you know, uh, cutting-edge technology and features being offered by each uh, OEM. So this really, you know, uh, uh, created a lot of interest among the buyers. Improved availability of semiconductors. Uh, while, while I say improved, uh, it's, you know, clear that it is no, still not behind us. Uh, what we hear is the, the semiconductor chip supply for auto industry will continue to remain uh, a challenge for at least another two years. Uh, this is what uh, you know. Again, uh, OEMs have, some OEMs have shared with us, uh, and what and we are we are also seeing some shifts. Like you know, uh, the entry level segment is actually facing a challenge in passenger cars, but the higher uh, ticket size cars, especially SUVs, and the premium end models within those you know, are selling uh, much higher and they're growing much higher. So, which is, again, uh, good news for us. Uh, in terms of CV, last year, uh, we saw, again, uh, a fantastic growth of 34% uh, on the back of the infrastructure uh, projects of the government. Uh, and, again, this uh, we, we feel the growth will continue, but definitely not at this rate in this year. Uh, and the bus segment rebounded very well, uh, which was mainly due to the schools opening up, as I mentioned, and three wheelers as well. Uh, yes, there was some pre-buying that happened in uh, the March due to this OBD2, uh, you know, norms coming into place and you know the price hikes that happened uh, in in two wheelers and uh, uh, commercial vehicles and passenger cars as well. So there was some pre-buying, but nevertheless, uh, demand is still still good. Uh, Two wheelers continue to remain a challenge while we saw good growth. Uh, but again, this year there are some, uh, you know, as as we are reading, there are there is this El Nino effect which is going to play some role in a little bit below normal monsoon. While it will still be okay, but uh, it is supposed to be 95, 96% of uh, you know the average rainfall. So we'll have to see how that unfolds. Uh, of course, the price increases that have happened in two wheelers continue to you know for the challenge and, of course, add to that the fuel cost increase. So we'll have to see uh, two wheelers, but, uh, again, the prediction of the industry is it will it'll be a growth in, in the range of, you know, 7 to 8 uh, percent for this year. Uh, exports, particularly in two wheeler, which is a big uh, big part of, you know, each, each OEM, also saw a lot of challenge uh, due to, you know, some issues in the African continent, uh, which, you know, hopefully should uh, ease out in the coming year. And that should uh, that should start some recovery. Uh, the good part and the bright part is, of course, the EV, uh, the electric two wheelers, three wheelers, and in fact, even passenger cars for that matter. Uh, you know, as an industry, we crossed one million sales uh, totally in EV. So that's one big milestone uh, to start with. And uh, you know, the sales are continuing to be robust. And uh, I mean, I'll of course come to the EV EV story when I come to that slide. Uh, so overall, I think uh, you know it's 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 been a good year. Uh, now I'll come back. Uh, I'll come back to the slides. Uh, we are you know right now we are left at I was at slide seven when I got into you know the overall industry. So I'll just come back to the slides. If you come to 
flight 8, uh, which is more a financial track record. Uh, again, the figures are there. Uh, you, were, you must have gone through the figures. But strength and net worth, better ROIC. And, uh, you know, of course, the networking capital also, we have improved our FY21. So that's that's also good, and uh, you know ROC as you go as you see forward, it's almost 31 percent. Uh, that is on the slide nine, uh, which is right, uh, which you can refer to that right now. Uh, so the ROC is at 31.5 percent. Uh, coming to slide 10, which is again the PNL statement, uh, which I already shared. So I'll move on to the next slide 11, uh, which captures in summary all the key financial parameters. Uh, I did mention on the ROC and the improved ROC. In fact, among the highest ROC that we have seen in the past, uh, you know, in fact, the highest ROC that we have seen. EBITDA also, while uh, we have discussed in several in several calls uh, in the past, uh, and we have been working on several initiatives to improve the EBITDA, uh, you can see the trend reversing from the last two years, and we are, you know, hopeful of you know, maintaining this trend and uh, improving it further. Uh, slide. Number 12 is the key ratios, uh, dividend I, al I already did share, uh, you know, uh, it's, it's totally 2.65, which is 90 pesa, which was declared as interim, and 165, which we declared yesterday, so wrote totally 2.65, which is a dividend payout of 28%. Uh, in terms of, uh, again, coming to slide 13, which is which shares the revenue mix, uh, the good part is, you know, we, the passenger car has really improved in terms of our sales and overall industry sales. I'll come to the share of business slide later. So our uh, overall two-wheeler share is now at 59%. Passenger car is 27% and commercial vehicle is 12%. Uh, in terms of the channel mix, uh, you know, OEs, the demand was very, very strong. Uh, so that's why that that is 85%. And to that extent, while we had an excellent year in aftermarket as well, uh, we, we, we did... The, close to 380 crores of sale totally in aftermarket, which is, again, a record performance and also a very good growth compared to last year. However, OE demand has been very strong, uh, so that's why you see the channel mix uh, reflecting that. Uh, and now if we come to slide number 15, uh, you know, and we'll get into each of those areas shown there. So first is the exports part. Uh, exports. We once again, for the second year in a row, caused 100 crore sale. In fact, we had the highest export, though so the figure is marginally high, I mean, uh, uh, higher over last year. Uh, but the good part is we were able to uh, cross 100 crores. Uh, why I say it is good is because we, as you know, we had a challenge that the entire Volkswagen Russia sale has become zero uh, due to the ongoing uh, conflict there. Uh, Volkswagen has, uh, you must have read, Volkswagen has shut shop. In, uh, and, and actually sold it to a, a Russian outfit. Uh, so folk, so we, we are working with Volkswagen on some other export models, but however, that will take some time uh, to fructify. Uh, so despite this setback on exports, we still did cross 100 crores. Uh, so that's the good part. Uh, and coming to the second part of this business driver is the domestic dominance. Uh, on two-wheelers, as I mentioned, uh, you know, our traction with all players has been increasing and our market share is now at 32 percent the same market share exactly a year back uh, when we did the investor presentation after last year's i mean 21 22 uh, fiscal year performance was at 25 percent so we have I mean, very clearly gained market share uh, mainly through you know of course our ic engine penetration and our some of our customers doing extremely well of course uh, thanks to them and electric vehicle penetration. Uh, we we continue to win uh, good orders uh, in in with our customers. In fact, uh, currently, as you all know, we had one, and we are currently in the uh, production stage of uh, the Shine 100, the 100 cc model, which HMSI is getting big on. Uh, so that is currently also getting some good bookings. So we are we are hopeful of a good demand out there. Uh, coming to slide 19, which shares the EV story, our market share is, you know, in Q4 has actually gone up even higher to 80%. Uh, and we are there, you know, with every top player, uh, you know, top Ola, of course, as you know, is 100% with us. TVS is 100% with us. Aether, Ampere, uh, and yes, Okinawa also. Uh, so all the top players uh, actually, you know, uh, has Gabriel suspension. 
So we, are, we continue to do extremely well. And this slide, which is slide 20, uh, this was a new foray. Uh, you know, we, we have selectively chosen this e-bike because, you know, one, there is a huge growth of e-bikes predicted to happen in the European geography, particularly uh, owing to all the climate uh, you know, activists and also more, more and more sensitization of each and every individual, which is actually a good thing. Uh, the growth of e-bikes is supposed to continue at the rate of, you know, almost 20% in, in the European market. Uh, so it's a very high growth area. Here we have developed the first front fork and given it to uh, Hero, the Hero Cycles, and they, they are exporting it to their uh, German arm. Uh, so we have dispatched the first uh, first lot, and we are, uh, you know, of course, awaiting, uh, you know, the performance and, of course, the feedback of the model in the market. And uh, we intend to develop this uh, further and look at some other options as well uh, of supplying to some good e-bike makers. Uh, so this is a good uh, new, you know, new chapter and ensuring that our portfolio further is diversified and is in line with the environment initiative so that, you know, we do not, do not miss uh, on bikes which are growing due to the sustainability uh, in a, uh, in improvement that is happening. Uh, coming to slide 21, which is passenger cars. Uh, again, here we saw a market share increase compared to last year. Uh, all our SUVs, you know, which we're supplying to Maruti and also being shared by Honda, uh, that is doing well. We also have got a good order from uh, Tata Motors and Volkswagen, uh, you know, we have started supplying supply 100%, uh, so that is also improving. Uh, all models of Volkswagen and Skoda, uh, which are being made in India, are being supplied by Gabriel now. Uh, so so we'll see improved volumes going further. And Mahindra, of course, the XCV 700, which is doing extremely well, the Thar, uh, both both continue to do well. Uh, so this is the utility vehicle, this is slide 22. You can see, you know, all those utility vehicles which are shown in the, as pictures here, uh, you know, the, the point is our, uh, our traction in utility vehicle is very strong and that is the segment that is growing uh, in the passenger car space. So we are in the right space at the right time. Uh, Maruti Jimny has recently been launched. Uh, so, you know, the early, early uh, information that we have is the bookings are good. So we'll have to see how that performs. Uh, slide 23 is on commercial vehicle where, you know, we are practically the single source to the entire country. Uh, and we continue to, you know, work with every OEM, supply all the varieties, uh, you know, just in time as the OEM uh, desires, and that continues to be a good stronghold for us. Uh, railways, uh, we all, I always mention that this is, you know, uh, small. The growth is still not there. Uh, we are still not uh, back to pre-COVID levels. Uh, but the good part is we are now expanded into high-speed trains and also locomotives where we were not there earlier. So this is a good development. Uh, so obviously when the volumes do start growing, uh, we, we I mean, are ready with our products. Uh, slide number 25 is an aftermarket. Uh, again, uh, you know, here I already mentioned on the good growth that we had uh, compared to last year. Uh, we are once again kind of relaunching the tire and tube business. Uh, and uh, again, the sales have been good in the past couple of months. So we hope to build on this, uh, you know, the new new relaunch that we have done, and uh, you know, uh, capture this tire, especially in, I mean, uh, rather mainly in two-wheeler and three-wheeler segment. Uh, the m &A part, which we have been, you know, telling that we were working on a couple of them. Uh, one did not uh, did not come through, uh, but one which is very important and very significant and a very high growth area has come through, which we already shared on our call uh, on May 10th. This is with Inalpha for the roof systems, the number two player in the world uh, for sunroof systems. Uh, we, we have got the order from Hyundai and Kia, so we are setting up a plant in Chennai. And we already have a lot of interest from, you know, uh, all the other OEMs uh, to, to look at developing their sunroof and supplying. So, yes, we'll have to, of course, first cater to uh, Hyundai here and build on it. But again, uh, just to mention that it's a right uh, right product, and there's only one other player, so we are the second mover. Uh, so we'll definitely get uh, you know good traction in this in this high growth area. Uh, 
then coming to technology uh, we continue to you know reinforce our technological development uh, as you know we have uh, you know opened our new tech center for four wheelers uh, and commercial vehicle and railway in, uh, with a small test track as well in chakan uh, so that is going well and we also hired a couple of experts uh, who are experts in electronic suspension uh, so we have developed our first uh, you know electronic suspension uh, semi actor uh, which is it is quite good i, I mean uh, instantly i did drive it myself last week and the response has been really good uh, and the product is really good uh, we'll be offering it to oils very shortly uh, so we are expecting you know some some good movement in that space as well which was which was not which was actually uh, you know a blank as regards our product portfolio so now we filled it up uh, we have 60 r&d specialists and we have filed 75 patents so that's also a you know a very good indicator of our commitment to technology we you also uh, know that we are amongst the highest spenders in r&d within the indian auto components uh, and we continue to do so the board remains committed uh, towards this particular initiative uh, these are some pictures of uh, on slide 31 now and slide 32 we have already uh, discussed so i would actually you know uh, uh, and and the uh, the presentation part here and uh, you know uh, now, now we have open to uh, questions and comments and your inputs uh, so over to you thank you so much should we open the floor for questions yes please thank you we will now begin the question and answer session anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 on the touch tone telephone if you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you can press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question comes from the line of Momoksh Mandalesha from Anandwadi. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you so much, sir, for the opportunity, sir. Uh, just one of financial first. Uh, gross margin were low sequentially. Any reasons for decline, sir, this quarter? Can you repeat the question? Yeah, so the gross margin was lower sequentially this quarter. Uh, so, any reason for decline, sir? No, none in particular. It's only uh, some changes in the product mix uh, that causes that decline. But if you look at the overall perspective, uh, including the other income, the profitability is better from the previous year. Not it. I mean, there's no major change in uh, uh, RM cost, right? Uh, in terms of uh, uh, increase in RM cost, sir. Increasing uh, which cost? RM. Uh, RM. RM. Uh, no, 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 no. Okay. And sir, so, uh, how do you see the demand impact on the you now E two wheeler uh, volumes uh, post this fame subsidy reduction? Any indications from the OEM uh, how they plan to ramp? Uh, I mean, look at the production numbers. Uh, well, I mean, obviously there'll be a little bit of correction, uh, but yeah, what have we spoken to OEMs? In fact, you know, many of them have already, you know, life is only logical. Uh, you know, you cannot make your business case purely on subsidies. So everybody has, you know, actually, uh, everybody knew that the subsidies at some point of time are going to be, you know, uh, tapered down and and even at some stage withdrawn. Uh, so I would say that, you know, uh, Ola is definitely, uh, that's one OEM that we have feedback. They, they have said that they've uh, seen it earlier only and uh, uh, they don't see any change in demand as far as their product is concerned. And you can see by the numbers that they continue to do well. Uh, because it's finally, a, even, even at that price, it's still a compelling proposition. Uh, you know, as more and more people use EVs, uh, the sheer comfort, the sh low cost, zero maintenance, and and the features, you know, they become uh, so compelling that the people will only shift and gravitate towards you know more and more EVs. Uh, cost becomes uh, is not not uh, you know a key driver. Uh, cost is surely a driver when it comes to rural segment. Uh, anyway, in rural segment, you know, the EV traction is still yet to yet to pick up. I'm talking of high speed two wheelers. Uh, so I don't see any big, uh, you know, there'll be some immediate uh, reaction, but I don't see 
any big change in terms of the demand. Got it, sir. Uh, this is uh, related to sunroof uh, and the, the initial investment which we are making. Uh, so, what are the components uh, uh, initially company would be localizing and uh, what would be procured from the other suppliers? And uh, related to that, uh, just what a sense on the sunroof industry, like uh, how many OEMs would be currently importing this uh, sunroof and uh, who would be being supplied by the current lo uh, local supplier? Uh, maybe I didn't get your first part of the question. Can you repeat that first part? Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so uh, uh, I mean, uh, the related to the sunroof investment which we are making initially, uh, what which part of sunroof we would be localizing uh, by ourselves, and and what would be procured from other suppliers? Okay. Okay. So yeah. So sunroof, of course, uh, if you have made again a detailed plan of localization. Uh, yeah. You know the, the glass. Of course, we'll have we'll be buying from the local glass makers. So that's one big uh, uh, big part that we'll be localizing soon. And yes, there is also uh, a value addition that is done in house in terms of you know the PU encapsulation. Uh, so that for that the machine is already ordered and it should come in the in the month of July or August. Uh, so that will also be a good value addition which is localized and. It will be a localization as far as the OEM is concerned, uh, naturally. Uh, you know, there will be a significant, uh, you know, item, A category item being localized. Uh, your second question was, you know, uh, how are OEMs currently buying it? Uh, many are still importing. There is only one player, Webasto uh, of Germany, uh, uh, who's, who has a shop, I mean, who has a plant in Pune. They are also opening up a plant in Chennai. Uh, so we... We will be the second player uh, who will be, you know, opening up the sunroof uh, systems in India. So uh, the demand is very good. The traction, you know, that people want only the high end with the sunroof, uh, as far as the SUV particularly is concerned. Uh, so we see enough and more demand, and uh, OEMs very keen to localize this part. Oh, thank you so much for the opportunity, sir. Thank you. Next question comes from the line of Priya Ranjan from SDFC AMC. Please go ahead. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Congrats, Manoj and Rishi. Uh, so my question is two, three. Uh, one is on the market share front. So uh, one is you have gained meaningful market share in two-wheeler. And what do you see the scope if the electrification continues to ramp up and uh, with the new order wins, etc.? So in next couple of years, where do you see the market share in two-wheeler, three-wheeler as well as in passenger car segment uh, going forward? That is the question number one. Question number two is on the, uh, the uh, suspension part on the technology front. So are we looking more for, say, predictive maintenance, predictive suspension and all with the more electronics and motors, controller, etc. Uh, is that one of the area where we should focus on, or is the company at least looking at those areas to uh, foray into and uh, going forward? And third part is, if you, uh, I mean, third question is mostly on the, you have mentioned about the core 90 cost reduction program, so if you can highlight some of the features and the outcome you expect out of that. Okay, thanks. Uh, firstly, thanks, Priyanjan, uh, for the compliments. Uh, thanks to the entire team of Gabriel. Uh, so, you know, coming to your question on market share, uh, we've seen some good improvement, uh, as I shared with you with the figures in the slides. Uh, Two-wheelers, we are at 32%. So we definitely would want, I mean, this is also a mix of electric vehicles, but it's within electric vehicles, which is the high growth area, we are at 80%. Yes, obviously, retaining 80% market share is going to be a challenge. Uh, naturally, being the first mover, we have this advantage now. Uh, so, so we are uh, working on, you know, continuously looking at some uh, even technology improvements within this space, so that we are able to, you know, give some unique USP to the EV and sustain this market share going forward. In IC engines two wheelers, IC engine two wheelers, we were, you know. Uh, or rather, our uh, key customer HMSI uh, is, uh, you know, I mean, has a very good, uh, you know, relation and uh, impression with uh, Gabriel. We have won their award, won an award recently in their vendor meet. In fact, we were also asked to present uh, to the entire vendor forum 
uh, in the vendor meet uh, this time. Uh, so, so uh, just to say that you know the relationship is very strong. So they have given us this motorcycle model of 100 cc, which is a commuter segment, high volume segment for HMSI uh, on a 100 percent uh, uh, you know share of business basis. So it is the first time that they're doing 100 percent uh, business uh, share. Uh, and TVS also is going strong. Uh, similarly, Suzuki also is doing well. We we have recently won the Suzuki. Uh, electric two-wheeler business, a new model that they're going to launch in 2024. So for that, they've already nominated us. So that will improve our EV traction further. So uh, overall, yes, this market share uh, from you know what we are at 32%, including EV, can definitely you know go more towards you know 40 plus percent. And coming to passenger car, we are at 23%, and we have clear plans of going to you know 30% plus in the passenger car as well. Uh, three wheelers, we continue to be a dominant player, and uh, you know it's a preferred, it's a very uh, strong brand in the market. Uh, so, so there again, I would say you know a, a more or less sixty percent market share in three wheelers uh, in IC as well as in EV. We are already with Kinetic, we are already with uh, Bajaj, and we are already with uh, uh, you know the, the uh, Mahindra trio. So we are already quite well entrenched, and even in the EV civil space. So uh, that's on uh, you know the market share. Uh, your second question was on the technology. So good question, Viranjan. Uh, so in fact, we are right now working on uh, semi-active. Uh, so semi-active is you know as far as uh, uh, the industry is concerned, the semi-active itself is a very good uh, proposition and uh, a big cost increase compared to your passive. Uh, a fully predictive is a long way away. Uh, fully predictive is offered in very, very limited models, even in Europe, uh, which is the most developed market in the world. Uh, just to share, you know, uh, if you see, if you, let's say, uh, the Mercedes GLE, uh, the SUV, which is you know, over a crore of rupees, uh, there you get a fully active suspension, even in Germany, at an additional cost of 5,000 euros. So you have to, you have to actually pay an additional premium when you uh, book your car if you want a fully predictive suspension. So it's a very high ticket item. I don't think you know uh, that will be coming to India. Uh, so while well, it's a good technology to have, and we will look at developing, but it's not on you know as far as the immediate plans are concerned. Uh, we definitely are uh, you know developing our semi-active, which which is you know as, as I already mentioned is uh, going uh, on the right path. Uh, and we, we expect to, you know, introduce in some of the ways uh, at the earliest in India. Uh, now, your third part was score 90. So I'll uh, let Rishi respond to the score 90 initiative. Hi, Priyanjan. Good to talk to you. Uh, so, again, score 90 being something of, you know, two prongs. One is to sustain the kind of cost that we have and in order to sort of match the inflationary pressures of salary increases and other cost increases. We have to do it a year on year to maintain the efficiency of that. So previous year went into maintaining that. This year we are targeting uh, a little more aggressive in terms of our core IT program, and uh, which is in line with our double-digit uh, endeavor. So uh, broadly speaking, uh, we are looking at uh, you know 0.5 to a percent or a little more than that as well under the core IT program this year. Sure, sure. And just uh, just extension of the previous the, uh, the technology part. So, if you go from say semi-active, I mean from the normal suspension to semi-active, and then predictive. So, what is the kind of uh, uh, the content increase happens uh, for the OEM or the pricing or the cost in terms of percentage? Not maybe not in the absolute number, but. Uh, well, it's a big figure, you know, that figure is, uh, uh, I mean, it, it, it is uh, actually several times I'm not able to share the figure right now because it, you know, it depends on the scope, uh, you know, depends on the number of sensors that the OEM wants, whether they want uh, your, your ECU or their ECU, so it's, the configuration also uh, differs, so it's difficult to answer that question, but suffice to say that it is in multiple of uh, the passive suspension. Sure, sure, sure. I think that, I mean, getting... I mean, semi-active also introduced in 
uh, models is going to put a lot of cost pressure. Uh, so it's not going to be a high volume, but yes, it's a good technology which you know uh, is expected, and that's why we are you know, developing this in our product book. Yeah. Sure. So globally, have you seen the excess semi-active is more on? Say uh, thirty forty lakh rupees of car, or it's more of upward of that. Yeah, it's totally on. Uh, I mean, uh, I would say definitely thirty plus uh, range of cars. So uh, you can see even even if you see the cars being offered today, the high end, uh, let's say the starting of high end, you know, the, let's say the A class, the C class, the most the BMW 3 Series, uh, even the 5 Series. Or the Audi Q4, Q3, and uh, A3, A4. None of them have been entered. Got it. Got it. And just uh, uh, coming to the sunroof part. So now you have got the customer as well. So and uh, you have got the techni technology partner as well. So uh, have you started the discussion with the other OEMs? I mean, because now this is a uh, one of the must-to-have kind of features in most of the cars. Uh, and I think the penetration from the 20%, it will keep going up. I mean, some forecast is talking about 40-50% penetration in few years' timeline. So, uh, what is the receptiveness of the, uh, the other customer beyond, I mean, your uh, existing orders, uh, if you have spoken very, with them? Uh, very, very interested is all I can say. Sure. Okay. Thank you. That's all from my side. Best of luck. Thank you. The next question comes from the line of Nikhil Rumta from Nippon India Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, sir. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, so, a few of my questions have been answered. Uh, just quickly, if you can also share, I mean, say three years down the line, what type of targeted share of revenue you are looking for uh, from passenger cars and then two wheeler, three wheeler, and then from CVR? I mean, this is inclusive of the fact that we'll be starting this sunroof thing as well. So, say three years down the line, where do we see ourselves? So your voice was a little feeble, couldn't get you. Uh, can you be a little louder? Yeah. yeah. Is it better? Ah, uh, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. So, uh, sir, I wanted, like, say three years down the line, where do we see ourselves uh, in terms of share of various segments, basically passenger car and then two-wheeler, three-wheeler, and C uh, CVR? Ah, in terms of our segment mix? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so, you know, if you see this quarter, like I mentioned, we are at uh, roughly, you know, uh, 59, 27, and 12 is what at, at Q4 we were. Uh, so going forward, I would say it would be more towards, yeah, in, in 55, 30, uh, you know, between passenger car and two-wheeler in that range. 55 and 30, basically. 55 would be passenger and two-wheeler, you mentioned. With two wheelers, two and three wheelers. We actually report uh, these. Yeah, yeah, two and three, two, three wheelers. And, and and hopefully, hopefully, we should be adding a little small bar on the bicycles, e-bicycles also. Uh, of course, numbers are too early to say, but hopefully, yes, we should be able to add something. Okay, okay. And sir, uh, we have also started focusing on uh, international geography. So, in terms of export and. Uh, OEM as well, if you can give what type of share you are looking at, uh, say, three years from now. Uh, export right now, you know, uh, like, uh, if you talk of Gabriel exports, we are doing, you know, just about 4% uh, as uh, right. Right. of total. Uh, so we have, uh, you know, always told that we want that to be in double digit 10%. Uh, you know, so we we are working on the technology, the semi-active which we are developing. You know, uh, obviously will be more. I mean, more traction might be there in developed markets. Uh, so we we still maintain that is our aspiration and target of getting to that figure. Okay, okay. It'll and sir, time. last question. Yeah, yeah. It'll take time, though. I mean, uh, you know, your export uh, breakthroughs uh, take definitely take some time. Got it. Got it. The last question, if you can just throw some light on the railways part as well. I mean, how is it moving now? Last quarter, you indicated that things are moving slow. But how is it now and where do you see it? Uh, what part? Railways. Railways. Uh, it is improved, I mean, you know, but the recovery is still, I mean, the figures are still low, not near the pre-COVID levels. Uh, 
uh, I mean, it still is a very small growth that we are seeing there. Okay. Okay. So it won't become a big uh, uh, share in our revenue. Say. We don't expect that. Okay. Okay. But yes, so we, sir, we, yeah. we, have, we now also have developed the locomotives which are not with us. So that should add, you know, of course, some, some size, yeah. Okay. Okay. Perfect, sir. That's all from my side. Then. Thank you so much. Thank you. Next question comes from the line of Chetan Chetan Jindoria from Alpha Credit Advisors. Please go ahead. Uh, hello, sir, and uh, congratulations for a very good set of numbers. I uh, also wanted to understand last two years we have seen very sharp improvement in we have seen very sharp improvement in uh, market share and thereby very uh, strong growth uh, ahead of the industry volumes. So going ahead also, given that we have high share in the leading mo um, uh, models of Maruti and also Volkswagen Mahindra and also a uh, good share in EV, should we see, uh, you know, mid-single, uh, mid-double-digit uh, kind of, you know, uh, sharp outperformance over uh, the uh, underlying industry volumes? Uh, Jason, so, uh, yeah, we are seeing that improvement. Uh, we are basically, you know, as I said, coming to passenger car, uh, we had the right products in the SUV segment, and which is growing. Uh, so that is helping us. Uh, yeah. So I mean, clearly, we we'll, we'll, the target is to per outperform the industry. Uh, you know, be ahead of the industry uh, in two wheelers through through you know improving our market share in EVs, which is which is happening in PC through. SUVs and also getting into EVs, we still are not on EV. Our first EV in passenger car is the Citro, uh, you know, EC3, which which has been launched, and we are also working on a model uh, with Tata Motors uh, for an EV uh, EV platform, which will be in 2025. Uh, so with that, even our passenger car, uh, you know, uh, market share will at least continue to be ahead of the market. Is what is the plan. Okay, got it. And so on the margin side, uh, earlier uh, we were aspiring to be double-digit margin, and uh, then you had also alluded uh, in last call about increasing uh, competitive intensity also. Uh, so given all this scenario, uh, should we expect improvement in our EBITDA margin uh, going ahead into next, uh, you know, medium terms, and uh, what are your aspirations about it? Yes, yeah, for sure. I mean, that's that's the plan I shared. You know that uh, Rishi also shared on the core 90 and several things that we're doing. So, a clear plan is to improve a bit up going forward in this year itself. Uh, and and aspiration is yes, uh, you know, to move into double digits. Uh, that that may take some time, but in this year itself, uh, we are we are working towards improvement of it, a bit up for sure. Okay, so we should see a 50 to 100 basis point improvement. That, that is what uh, uh, might be your uh, expectation. Uh, sorry, but like we, you know, uh, I've always said we don't give that you know, specific guidance. But uh, yeah, I can tell you on improvement, yes, uh, you will see that. Okay, great, sir. Thank you and all the best. Thank you. Next question comes from the line of Viraj Kacharya from Simple. Please go ahead. We have lost the line. Next question comes from the line of Mr. Pankaj. Please go ahead. Hello. Am I audible? Yeah, Pankaj. Hello. Okay. Uh, well, uh, thanks a lot for taking my question. So, first thing I just wanted to know, um, the order book for uh, one day Varad is out, and we being the market leader in the suspension, and I understand uh, one uh, one day Varad train costs around 120 odd crores as per the tender, and this uh, the railway minister has time and again. Uh, showed the efficacy of the suspension which which has been implemented in the in the train, and as 
we have 80 80% plus market share in railways are we not vendor to these uh, uh, i mean railways or the 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 companies which are developing these two uh, are producing these two these, these trains and secondly in, in the same I mean, uh, the, the the cost is 120 crores and you had earlier mentioned that each train rather in lhb uh, bogies which we we were we used to supply there were there, there used to be 16 or the suspensions instead of four or which were used by uh, in earlier trains so just wanted to understand what is the uh, total addressable market for us and whether we are present with these com- with these producers or manufacturers of the train or not the one that so you just tell try to answer your question uh, so on the railway we we have two or rather three new uh, orders that we got uh, but these are development orders uh, we do, still do not have the you know the bulk order that will come through you know once uh, the development order is processed and you know it, it performs well uh, which is what we, i mean we are expecting it should not be a problem uh, so one is uh, you know after lhb which had 18 shocks uh, 18 shocks per coach uh, we have now you know that into train 18 we are also into the electric locomotive and we are in the vande bharat so all these three are new additions to our railway family uh, and each of this has 20 20 uh, uh, dampers to a coach a like coach or even to a locomotive so there are 20 so the figure of 18 actually becomes 20 so to that extent there is increased content per per coach now uh, you know the tendering we are we are still not in the production space so we uh, i cannot give a figure of that as of now uh, but uh, on the tendering part it is again shared between uh, you know various players so that's how it will go so if one co- one train costs around 120 crores there are 16 odd crores or 16 odd uh, coaches to uh, in each train so can i uh, and and that does the Uh, value of each coach would be around 7.5 to 8 odd crores so can we assume as and when it it is uh, uh, produced manufactured can we assume and this suspension being critical part of the right quality out there so uh, can we assume substantial share of the 7.58 crores per coach uh, as a uh, total addressable market total market total share of uh share for uh, suspension means maybe uh, say say around 50 lakhs to a crore per coach okay that unfortunately no uh, you know the biggest ticket size in a coach is actually the rolling stock and then the braking system and then the electricals that are there and uh, the of course the air conditioning and the door systems so largely the big ticket items are these the suspension definitely is not in that space but yes i mean it is the the value per coach of a suspension is uh, you know significantly higher compared to let's say what we give in passenger car etc uh, no doubt about that but uh, it is nowhere near you know, <laughs> nowhere near uh, crore or something that you mentioned certainly not and so it's my second question if i had just on the volume you know uh, while it gives, brings a good good bottom line uh, but the volume point of view is still a, a very small you know and now that we Yeah, it is almost 3000 crores it, it still is a very small uh, part so we in fact we don't even report it in the segmental revenue it's you know, it's actually quite small okay. so second question uh, regarding the margins so if you compare our top line uh, somewhere in fy 18 or 17 i suppose we had a top line of 1500 odd crores and part of around 146 odd crores over period of time we have practically doubled the top line but our pack has just grown by 33% and in this period we have uh, implemented the core 19 program so it seems that the whole program though it was a success but it has not contributed anything to the bottom line a very good uh, good observation but like we told you know the commodity increases have taken away even if you do a simple even if you get a full compensation you know they have taken away almost 2 and 1/2% uh, arithmetically you know if you look at that in terms of the growth so you know so if 
figures, if we had not done the core 90, uh, figures definitely could have been adverse, much adverse. The core 90 has you know, poor helped uh, in terms of you know uh, not slipping, you know, uh, and and like I mentioned, you know, now we we are looking at other programs to improve our margins, which you are seeing over the last three years there's an improvement trend. Uh, at the total year, if you see, uh, so that should continue. So, can we expect anything in near term? Yeah, like I mentioned, in this year itself, uh, you know, while we don't give any guidance and figures, but uh, there will be an improvement in the beta for sure. And my last question, if I can, if I may, please, why are we entering into the tires and cubes segment? I mean, this is a co another commodity which uh, I think we are diluting the value of Gabriel brand by entering into this segment. Uh, no, Chief, and contrary to that, actually, you know, the brand is, that's why if you see, we have not selectively chosen the segment. You not, we are not going into the commercial vehicle and the passenger car. Okay, so we are only going into three-wheelers and two-wheelers particularly three-wheelers, where our brand name is extremely strong. So, the de in fact, it adds to the dealer uh, overall product basket. And, you know, they have a wider range to offer uh, as far as Gabriel is concerned. And uh, tire also has been chosen because it is around the suspension. You know, it's the part which is distant from suspension. It's an adjacent part. And actually, both, you know, kind of play a role in, in each other's performance. Uh, so that's why tire, uh, you know, it, it definitely does not dilute the brand. Uh, we have selectively chosen this segment, uh, and uh, you know, uh, the, the, the pull from the customer also is good. The other part is, you know, this is the only uh, part a tire that is sold over the counter. You know, it's it's not uh, not like you know you have tire sales shops only doing that, like passenger cars. This. For the counter, any retailer is uh, free to sell and recommend the brand. Uh, so that's why we have chosen this particular uh, segment. And as I said, it's doing well. Uh, so the idea is we have a strong brand name. You know, we need to leverage the brand name. Again, carefully, I mean, carefully choosing, you know, not doing everything. Uh, and also maintaining the quality. Your question is very right uh, when, it, when it comes to maintaining the quality. So we have carefully chosen the supplier, we do quality audits, we have engaged advisors who have been from the tire industry, very, very seasoned people, to ensure the quality is maintained. So how much is the capital employed for the same? Zero. And practically zero. Uh, there is a very nominal cost for the tire modes, but practically zero. So ROC point is you know, an excellent point. Sure. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Next question comes from the line of Tiral from Philip Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, good afternoon, sir. Thanks for the opportunity. Uh, so my question is again regarding to the Core 90 uh, program. So how much of the benefit of Core 90 initiative, according to you, is reflected in FY23 margin? Uh, it's, uh, a percent, two percent and a half. How much, sir? You are talking about one percent. Uh, sir, uh, your voice is not audible. It's one to one and a half percent. Okay, and sir, how much of the uh, cost inflation we are able to pass on to the customer as, uh, you know, as MD sir, uh, said that, you know, we have been impacted by almost two, two and a half percent because of the rise in the cost of raw material. So, how much we have passed on, uh, you know, to the customers and how much we are expecting in FI24? The commodity pass through is almost 95 percent in our case. So we have, uh, you know, fully passed on whatever the cost inflation we have seen till date. If you do the calculation, the mathematical impact of commodity in the previous year is almost 1%. Even if we do 100% pass through, the margins would go down because of the mathematical denominator effect of 1%. 
And so on the sunroof uh, business side, as MD sir said that we are looking to localize a categories of item. So how much this contribute to the total RM basket? So uh, you're talking about sunroof, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, obviously, uh, I'm certainly not able to disclose that, but uh, we are going by you know first the glass because it's a logistically also a big item. Uh, cost is also it's a, uh, I mean a big part of the uh, RM. Uh, so it makes sense to localize the glass first and some other parts. And we have drawn a detailed plan of localization over the next, you know, uh, actually three years because it will be done in phases. Uh, there is validation also. So that's, that's what it is. Okay. And so what is the capex for FI24 uh, as a business as a whole? Well, we are targeting 150, uh, cash flow should be in the range of 100 to 150. So this includes this uh, sunroof also or you are talking about only Gabriel standalone? Excluding sunroof. Okay, okay. Thank you so much. Sir. Thank you. Next question comes on the line of Shashank Kanodia from ICICI Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, good morning, sir. Just wanted to check, uh, are we present with uh, Simple Energy, which launched an electric tooler yesterday evening? Uh, simple Energy, I don't think so. I don't think so, but uh, you know, actually, uh, we keep tracking. I'll come back on that because there are uh, so many tools of EV manufacturers, so, you know, uh, over 200 of them. Uh, so we we are actually carefully choosing the ones uh, that we, we actually develop. Uh, because we also do a kind of a, you know, a check on the, the, I mean, a kind of due diligence also on, on the maker. Otherwise, you know, there's a huge amount of development effort that goes. Uh, so simple energy, uh, we, we are we're making samples for them, but I don't know whether it's in the model that has been shared yesterday. Okay. And secondly, sir, in, in early in the calendar year, there was, uh, you know, media articles mentioning about uh, the front folks taking a knockoff at Ola electric scooters. Mm -hmm. So just wanted to check, are we at fault by any case? And Ola is offered to replace it free of cost for the customers. So is there any financial implications for us? So if you read the, the article, it came, there's a clarification also which came in Mint. Uh, so it is clearly said that the fork arm is what is what uh, that failed. It is not the front fork suspension. Unfortunately, when you talk of fork, everything comes to front fork. So it is a it's a casting which connects the front fork with the wheel. Okay. So which is not supplied. We just bought by direct Ola by direct I mean, directly by Ola. Uh, we don't supply this part uh, to them or to anybody. It's not our scope. Understood. So we are at not at fault by any chance. Any chance? Fine, sir. That's all from my side. Thank you. Thank you. Next question comes from the line of Devang Patel from Samiksha Capital. Please go ahead. Sir, I questions are around CAPEX. What is our peak revenue potential from current capacity? And for the next few years, what kind of brownfield or greenfield uh, expansion do we need to do, which will give us what kind of asset turns? So we are planning some uh, some brownfield, you know, in, in both in Kansa and Chakran, we are doing some minor expansions. Uh, I mean, these are uh, maybe just 20 crores or 20, 30 crores or uh, in terms of capacity uh, in machines as well as also increasing uh, the store area, FG area, etc. So increasing the uh, land and I mean, the building because we already have land. Uh, so these are the things that we are planning in terms of brownfield. Uh, greenfield, yes. Uh, looking at uh, the growth, we we surely will have to add uh, add a plant in the right the right geography. We are evaluating the geography, but uh, let's say in South, while we are in Hosu, we don't have anything in Chennai region. Uh, so that is one area, and we are also uh, you know in in the Sanan Gujarat area, we had a plot of land in Tata Motors Vendor Park. Uh, so we are also now taking the adjoining adjoining plot as well. We are in discussion with Tata Motors based on the, the business that they offered. So that will be some additional, you know, you call it, uh, well, it's 
it's a brown field or a green field. Yeah, it's additional plot, so adjoining plot, yes. So what is our peak revenue potential from current capacity? Uh, well, uh, from the current capacity, we easily, I mean, close to, close to, uh, close to 4,000 crores, a little less than 4,000 crores. This is not, and, uh, including, not including the sunroof. The sunroof is different. This uh, new greenfield, uh, uh, we'll get what kind of asset turns from that? And what would be the tentative size? So, Devan, again, the asset turn uh, in the first year, obviously, is going to take a little bit of a hit as compared to the 6.6 .6 that you see currently. But uh, with its peak utilization, I, I would safely assume that in the range of 6, uh, an asset turnover should, should be a LD1. Okay. Sir, and secondly, on, uh, uh, you know, negotiating with our OEM partners for uh, price increases, now we've already hit 31% ROIC uh, in FI23. Does that somehow dilute our, uh, you know, negotiation efforts? Well, we didn't get the question. Uh, what about 31%, you said? Uh, we, we already have reached 31% ROIC uh, with these margins. Does that... You know, somewhere, uh, you know, uh, hinder our, uh, you know, negotiation with OEMs on getting price increase, price increases. Uh, yes, that's still a discussion. We have got, uh, we have got the price increase back to back on the RM. So most of that is done and concluded, uh, practically everything. Uh, so we are, we are also, of course, looking at some, you know, uh, process cost increase because everything has gone up, including power, fuel. Uh, I mean, wage cost, etc. You know, the minimum wages, etc. So we are also looking at some uh, process cost increase with OEMs. Those discussions are still uh, in process. Okay, sir. And on sunroof, uh, what will be our outlay in terms of equity, uh, and when do revenues from that JV start? The revenue is proposed to start from the first quarter of the next calendar year, which is the Q4 of the current financial year. In terms of uh, the share capital, uh, we are looking at in the range of 50 to 60 crores. That's all from my side, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Next question comes from the line of Viraj Kacharya from Simple. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, thanks. That's a very question. Focus on the cross market. Uh, you know, if you look at our, can you hear me? Hello? Raja, uh, not able to hear you clearly. Am I audible now? Yes, better. Yeah, so basically, first question is on the cross margin. Now, if you look at our uh, mixed broadly in terms of business, say, aftermarket or the export piece or even the CV railway, you know, these are typically, you know, the margin hierarchy, these are the highest margin businesses for us and in the year they have done uh, quite good uh, in terms of share increases also there's been a healthy increase. Similarly in terms of EV you know in say two wheelers where the value addition or the margin structure is really better that's also seen a really really healthy flow for us. But when you look at the you know gross margin for the year uh, and especially say if I say even in Q4 uh, we're still around that 23 and a half 24 percent Band. So I understand the numerator and effector element, but just purely in terms of the margin structure, you know, when you say that 250, 250 basis points is the uh, gap, uh, what will drive that gap? Because the mix is already in your uh, favor incrementally for last few quarters. We're already seeing the RM softening or stabilizing. So from a contribution margin perspective, how should we understand, you know, the journey of, say, 250, or 300 business points increase, and you know what will that entail for us? So, well, that's a good question. Uh, to sort of summarize it in a simple form, let's look at say uh, 80 to 100 basis points on the operating leverage, and the remaining should come from the gross margins. And uh, gross margins will have various levers, including Core 90, which is renegotiating the suppliers. Uh, renegotiating with customers on price increases 
It's also to do with some softening of commodity having a full year effect now, given that last year did not have the softening uh, for the full year, and we still saw a lot of increases coming through. To the extent of uh, 0.8% uh, last year, the commodity impact was there on account of denominator, and uh, around 0.2 on account of under recovery because of the other businesses where there is no 100% indexation. So those benefits are going to come in this year, uh, as well as uh, we are looking at uh, some uh, product mix changes as well, which will help us uh, support the improvement in the growth margins. And just to add further on this now, if you look at our localization, say in a passenger vehicle segment or a you know two wheeler, and, and and this is in relation to you know if you look at the contribution margins which some of the other competitors they own. Say in a PV by Tenaco, or you know you have uh, you know other two wheeler MNC and local pair. Uh, the, even after this improvement, which we're expecting, it will still be a sizable amount of uh, gap yeah. versus what they earn and what we earn. So is it is there scope in terms of further localization, uh, increasing the value addition, you know, in the existing business structure? Uh, so how are we thinking on those lines? On the, uh, see on the passenger car side, we are fairly competitive. Uh, if you were saying about Teneco, we are aware of the numbers to some extent. Uh, again, everything is not known to us. but uh, And we compete in the same market. So we are fairly aware of what kind of numbers do they work with. And uh, I must say that we are better than that. Uh, yes, in terms of two-wheelers, three-wheelers, uh, two-wheelers especially, we have some scope of improvement and that's where we want to sort of uh, look at uh, maybe a backward integration in order to reduce our overall cost. Okay. So in terms of the base margin, you know, and say at the contribution level for this for business suspension business for us, uh, you know, after all the initiatives and, you know, if RM prices remain stable, then that should be somewhere around, say, 25, 26% level. I mean, indicatively, I'm not saying by when or, you know, it's also dependent on a lot of other elements. Uh, but generally, in terms of, you know, we have to just understand the base margin in this business for us, given the mix and everything. Uh, you know, so again, we answered this question already, given that uh, we are looking at 2 to 2.5%, and of which, say, assuming 0.5 to 0 1% operating leverage, the okay. remaining should come essentially from uh, gross margins. Okay. And second question is on the, you know, CapEx, which is at around 150 crore for this year. Correct me if I heard it wrong. Uh, that will be, you know, including the 50 crore investment which we'll be making in the JV, right, sir? No, that is excluding that. Okay, so this 150 crore is primarily towards what major buckets? I mean, if we can provide some perspective. So given that we do 30 to 40 crores on uh, routine maintenance capex, uh, remaining will be in the field of technology, number one. Number two would be automation. Uh, number three would be backward integration. And number four would be the capacity announcements as and where required for specific programs. Okay. So, you know, even in this year, I think there were some 13 crores of purchase of intangibles. So, uh, from a, I'm assuming this is pertaining to the technology which we have acquired. Uh, it's not uh, technology that is acquired. It is towards the technology that we are developing. Okay, so post these investments, you know, in the past we talked about having some gaps in terms of technology uh, versus, say, some of the MNC competitors. Uh, so post these investments, would we by and large be, you know, how should we look, look at our all portfolio coverage versus some of these competitors? Yeah, so it will uh, definitely, as far as technology is concerned, uh, you know, we'll close that gap on uh, semi-active. Uh, but having said that, you know, we also, the passive suspension also still remains the mainstay of business. So we'll have to continuously keep working on, you know, newer technologies. Like we introduced the, the FSD uh, in, on the minor XV70, which, which has been, you know, uh, received very well. So we'll have to continue to work on passive. Uh, and the second part is, uh, you know, while, while we, we will uh, fill up this technology gap, uh, the important gap to be filled also is uh, with respect to global business is you know getting a, acquiring global customers, uh, which is why you know we are we are also investing in you know hiring of expats. We already uh, done that. Uh, with that, we'll open up some global customers as well. So we'll then uh, close both the technology gap and the global 
customer relationship gap. Okay, and last question was on the cash part. So, you know, despite the capex or the investment which we'll be putting in the GV, uh, the cash position will just keep on building up, you know. Uh, any thought process on, you know, how we're looking to use that? Any thoughts on the buyback or the distribution, a dividend distribution policy? So, uh, you know, uh, we, we have been wanting to uh, to have the inorganic piece come live, which we have now done with one of this JV. The target is to uh, pursue this journey further, which is the largest utilization of the cash balance. We may uh, we may need to even lever if the target size is big. Second is on the organic growth that we already have, including backward integration. Certainly, the cash flow generations for the year would be utilized towards that. So the way I see it uh, from this, the build-up is actually going to be healthy in terms of, you know, giving us an opportunity to look at a bigger ticket size uh, in terms mm -hmm. of uh, organic. Okay. Uh, wish you good luck, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, due to time constraint, we have reached the end of question and answer session. I would now like to hand the conference over to Mr. Manoj Kulatkar for closing comments. Please go ahead. Thank you. Uh, so thank you once again, uh, you know, uh, for those uh, really interesting questions and also feedback and some compliments as well. Uh, so we will continue to, of course, you know, uh, increase and improve our market shares to stay out of the market in summary. And uh, glad to, of course, share the, the new diversification that we have done in Sunroof. We are all very excited about it. Uh, clearly, this gives, uh, you know, a whole new energy in the entire system. And... Uh, uh, just to say that we are, this is, you know, the uh, the first uh, the first significant move that we have done, and we will continue to scan for a positive. It's not it's not this is one off, uh, but this is part of a, a larger strategic plan, and we will continue to work on this, and uh, you know, hopefully, uh, do uh, do come up with one more in this fiscal or the next fiscal. Uh, so that's that's on the diversification part. Uh, as regards the industry, I've already shared. Uh, this year will be little more muted than what we saw. I mean, the high growth year last year. Uh, nevertheless, it's a growth year, uh, and overall, the in, the economy of the country uh, is is uh, in good hands and uh, looks to be on on a path of uh, growth only. So we don't have any immediate reason to worry as as regards the overall economy. Uh, so you know, look forward to. A good year and uh, your support as always. Uh, thank you so much, and uh, that's all from my side. Thank you. On behalf of Gabriel India Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us. You may now disconnect your lines.